All right. So what's our question today? I always get so nervous. I'm like, <gasps> am I going to have an answer? All right. I think you'll have an, an I think you'll have an answer for this one. Have you ever written a fan letter or approached someone you admire in person in person to gush? And this to me, I feel like since we meet a lot of celebrities, this is outside that realm. It's like where you initiated on your own a letter or approached a celebrity because you are a fan. I'm sure I have. I just have a terrible short-term memory. All right. You've had longer you to think about this. Yes. yes. You always have to go first. Okay. All right. So yeah, I know I have an advantage because I have the cards. Um, And Jen and I don't do the show in the same place, right? Someday, hopefully we'll be in the same place. But since due to COVID, we're both at home. Um, All right. So when I was young, and it's not, I guess it's not socially acceptable anymore, but I was a huge fan of Dukes of Hazard. Okay. And you know, those guys were hot in the general league. Luke, and, Luke and Bo Duke. Luke and I Bo just, Duke. I was kind of young for that, but I do remember them jumping in and out of the car, right? The car doors didn't open, the doors were welded That's shut. That's all yes. I remember about it. Okay. <laughs> so demo so they were rednecks, right? They, the idea was they were rednecks. If you never watched Dukes of Hazard, they were rednecks from and I think it was insinuated it was Georgia, but I don't know if they ever specified because there's a hazard county in Kentucky as well. So it was just some southern state. I think. I think, though, um, that it was supposed to be Georgia. Um, so they uh, were guys who had gotten in trouble for guns. And this is part of the show. And they got in trouble for guns. So the guns were taken away from them. And they could only use bow and arrows as their defense. So there were times where they used bow and arrows. And so they and, and the car, uh, the General Lee, again, this is not cool today. But back when I was a kid, this was so neat. Uh, the General Lee was the name of their car. And the doors were welded shut because demolition cars, you know, back in small southern towns, mm -hmm. you know, the doors didn't open. So they would run and jump and slide across the hood. So I was too young to understand that I wanted to be Bo Duke, not be with Bo Duke. OK, so I just knew that I had <laughs> this, you know, crush on John Schneider. Um, cause I thought he was really good looking, but like I said, I, you know, I wanted I, to be him. I wanted to be him. him. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I wrote him a letter and I got an autographed picture back. I don't think I ever kept that, which is sad, but I got an autographed picture back from John Schneider. And I remember licking my finger and rubbing it on part of the ink to make sure it was real. Cause I thought this is not printed. And like, I, even at like eight years old, I was like, is this, you know, authentic. He, he probably didn't sign it, but whatever. But I, yes. So John Schneider, I got an autograph and I reached out to him as a awesome. fan. And then the great thing is because of our profession, I did get to meet him later on. And I will say that he was as lovely as I was, would hope he would be um, when I did meet him. So I don't think I told him about reaching out to him when I was eight, but you know, <laughs> I did have his poster in my room too. So the whole thing, my mom, my mom was a little, you know, she was a little surprised confused. when I got older, confused when I got older that well, she had John Schneider. And, and, yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So pose the question one more time. All right. I, I've, I've now thought of three different celebrity stories that I could tell, but I want to pick the right one. All right. Have you ever written a fan letter, a fan letter or approached someone you admire in person simply to gush? Okay. So there's uh, three people I've approached. I haven't ever written a letter, I don't think, but I have approached three different people. Um, do you want, when I was in, um, a little kid, one of my first concerts, um, when I was in my senior year of high school, college visiting, or do you want one from when I was just married to Grant and we were headed out on our honeymoon? Oh my goodness. What time of life is the best? Well, let's do the, let's do the, um, you say high school or college? High school senior. Let's do the high school senior one. Okay. You're going to love the little kid one. one. Okay. okay. So um, when I was a high school senior, I got to go college visiting with a friend of mine. And I can't believe my parents let us go because we went up to the Northeast. I'm from Florida and um, grew up in St. Petersburg, Florida. And, um, but I wanted to go to um, visit women's colleges. I really wanted to go to Smith. Mm -hmm. Um, and so we, I went with a good friend and we went to like Smith and Barnard, um, UMass and Mount Holyoke, um, because I had, um, camp counselors that were all at those schools. So for some reason, my parents let us go by ourselves, which I can't even believe they let us do that. Um, 
but I think anyway, so I went and I was with one of my dear friends who I'm still friends with today. Her name is Chantel. Chantel and I went up and when we were at University of Massachusetts, Gloria Steinem was speaking. Oh, wow. And as young feminists, we were, you know, into reading her books and we knew about what a leader she was in the women's movement. And we were enamored, you know, and Gloria Steinem is like model level gorgeous, yeah. right? Like always yeah. has been growing up and um, her appearance is kind of how she what, be, became such a leader. She acknowledges that. Yeah. Um, anyway, so we go to her talk. There's maybe 30 people there um, to hear her speak at this school. And I'm guessing some of the students were probably required to go see her speak. But we stayed after and we stood in line and we stalked her so that we could nice. actually have a conversation. So when and we just gushed, I don't really even know what we said. I'm sure we sounded like babbling idiots. Oh, but I'm sure she the loved two it, of us were so excited to actually be in her presence. And I can remember her still standing kind of by a wooden podium lectern. And we just stood there and waited and waited lectern. until... We That's could meet her, word. right? Lectern nice. or what do they I call guess. it? I just, I'm impressed because that was very, is, I felt like I was reading a novel. Like, oh my uh, God, um, that's a great descriptive. I'm, I'm, I'm Episcopalian. <laughs> and there's lecterns. There's, there's lots of, you know. Very nice. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to, my to go to, I didn't mean to diverge, but I was very <laughs> impressed by that. I was but like, she Ooh. stood there and she kind of stood out from behind the lectern and <laughs> and we just gushed and gushed and talked to her and she was wearing her big uh you know eyeglasses and um How I don't know neat. if she was put off by us fangirling over her no, or no of course not it's well one and of those things that's one of those moments where we were like this is our chance and I think we even had to sneak into the lecture hall I mean I'm sure we weren't included that, I know, think that's like such a, a great, course. I mean, and it, so the, re, Jen, let me ask, answer this. The reason that your parents let you go by yourself is because the, the sneakiest thing you did was sneak into a Gloria Steinem <laughs> lecture. Okay. So, <laughs> that's there's real. your answer. Yeah. That's so I, I think your parents understood, but yeah, Gloria Steinem to me is just, she's just an icon. She's a historical icon. And, and for those who don't know her story, like Jen said, she's gorgeous. Um, I've had the pleasure of seeing her several times mm -hmm. and, you know, she got her, or at least she got on the, she got on the map when she went undercover as a, as a playboy bunny and wrote about it. She was a journalist. And so she yeah. wrote about how the women were treated in the playboy mansion. And she was gorgeous enough to be able to be a playboy bunny for that moment. So, uh, and one of the other thing, you know, we could talk about Gloria Steinem too, but one of the other oh, wow. things I love about her, is she wrote a piece um, about, if men had periods and it is, it, I, it's a, it's a must read if you can Google that because it is okay. hilarious and it's so true. And she what, inspired me. I mean, I already was interested, but after meeting her that day and talking with her and just fangirling and geeking out, um, I became a women's studies minor in college, you know, communications was my major, but, um, but it was, you know, the beginning of my devout women's studies. It's so funny. When I was at the University of Tennessee, I was on the um, I was on the events committee, and I ran the women's center. And so, of and Gloria and Gloria Steinem was one of the people we brought in. So, <gasps> it, yeah. So, really? 